Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guide's upcoming changes video. My name is Christoph and today I'm going to be going over all the upcoming changes that are planned for patch 9.22. Everything that I mentioned here can be found on the PBE right now or on the Riot dev boards, but please do keep in mind that nothing is set in stone and changes can be made before 9.22 hits the live servers. Also, I know we made a video about all the upcoming Season 10 changes a few days ago, but those won't be live until patch 9.23. Instead, we'll be covering the changes for patch 9.22, which will still see some drastic changes to some of your favorite champions like Zaya, Kai'Sa, Kale, Pantheon, Malphite, and many more. Okay, and for today, Today's question of the day, which champion do you think needs a rework in Season 10? My answer would be Warwick, because he just feels extremely buggy to play, and I'd honestly like to see some changes. Let me know what you guys think down below, I read all your comments. But before we get started, if you guys want to increase your rank this season and get those end of the season rewards, make sure to click the link below to go to ProGuides.com. We've been doing a ton of advanced content recently, which I'm sure will help all of you guys climb the ranks this season. Also, if you guys are interested in picking up a coach, we've We've got coaches online right now to help you out. Trust me guys, you won't regret signing up. Now with that being said, let's jump right into the video. Alright, to start things off, we have a bunch of new skins to showcase to you guys. The Louis Vuitton skin lineup is finally here, and oh my god, these skins look amazing. First up, we have the cool looking True Damage Yasuo. Then we have this insanely badass True Damage Akali skin from the KDA lineup. Next up, we got the slick True Damage Echo, which I cannot wait to purchase. And then we have True Damage Kiana. And of course, we can't forget the Louis Vuitton Prestige Edition True Damage Kiana either. See that LV pattern on her weapon, earrings and purse? Oh my God, this is incredible. All right, and finally, we have True Damage Senna. Also, speaking of Senna, Lucian's wife will finally hit the rift very soon, and her entire kit and abilities have been showcased on the PBE. We'll be making a very detailed Senna guide within the coming weeks, so make sure to hit that sub button to be notified of that video. Now, before we go into all the changes, let's do a brief rundown of her abilities. First is her passive, Absolution, making her auto attacks pretty slow, but compensates with bonus damage. Senna can also power up its range, attack damage, and crit chance by absorbing mist from enemy champions that she's attacking. Next up, her Q, Piercing Darkness, allows her to fire a bolt that heals her allies and damages her enemies. Senna can also keep attacking to decrease Piercing Darkness's cooldown. Kinda reminds me of Lucian's current Q. Senna as W is Last Embrace. This ability lets her command the mist onto the first target hit and then roots them after a short duration. This ability is similar to a Lux Q combined with a Zoe's E. Now Senna's E, Curse of the Black Mist, gives her some movement speed while also camouflaging her and her nearby allies in a mist. Teammates who emerge from the mist appear as unclickable wraiths to nearby enemies. Lastly, her ultimate Dawning Shadow fires a global beam. Allies in the beam are shielded, and enemies caught in the center take damage. Honestly, Senna looks super badass, and I seriously cannot wait to try her out. I think she'll be interesting in the bot lane as a support with Lucian ADC, and might just rival Zaya and Rakan for the title of the best bot lane duo. Alright, now that that's all out of the way, let's jump right into the balance changes. Starting with the top lane. Kale has been one of the strongest picks in the top lane for quite some time, and was long overdue for a nerf. Her presence in competitive play and her win rate in solo queue is is way too high at the moment, and she is confirmed to receive some changes this patch. Her Q, Radiant Blast, will have its base damage lowered from 70 to 250 to 60 to 220. Next up, her W, Celestial Blessing, will have its mana cost increased by 10 at all ranks. These two nerfs are pretty significant for Kale and will definitely impact her win rate in solo queue. Nerfing her already weak early game will result in a lot of her bad matchups being able to abuse her harder and denying her the scaling that she needs. Kale will likely be dropped from the S plus tier next patch, so click that sub button if you want to stay updated with our tier lists. Pantheon has also been one of the strongest picks in the top lane and holds a 98% ban rate in competitive play so far. For patch 9.22, Pantheon will receive a few small nerfs, which will do almost nothing, but they are welcome nonetheless. Firstly, his Q, Comet Spear, will have its minion damage reduction increased from 20% to 30%. Next up, his W, Shield Vault, will no longer gain dash speed once you purchase boots. These two nerfs are really, really, really small, and they will not affect his stance in the meta whatsoever. As a result, Pantheon will likely remain at the top of the tier list and be a must pick or ban champion in competitive play. Alright, now let's move on to the jungle. 
Surprisingly, AP Malphite has actually been an OP pick in the jungle recently and is receiving some nerfs in patch 9.22. His ultimate unstoppable force will have its AP ratio nerfed significantly from 100% to 80%. This is a huge damage nerf to the full AP build and it'll drop AP Malphite from an A tier pick to around a B or even a C tier. However, Malphite's full tank build for the top lane will remain almost unaffected by this change so you can continue playing his standard route. Sejuani has received a ton of changes within the past few months, and the balance team, well, they realize that they have over nerfed her. In order to help bring her win rate up a tiny bit, Sejuani will receive a bunch of minor changes next patch. Firstly, her health per level has been increased from 95 to 105. Next up, her HP regen has been buffed from 0.85 to 1.0, and her attack speed per level has been raised by 0.5. Lastly, her Q Arctic Assault will have its base damage increased from 80 to 240 to 80 to 280 and the ratio on this ability has also been buffed by 20%. These are some great changes for Sejuani, which will help her stance in the meta by a lot. However, these changes are nowhere enough to compensate for the previous nerfs that she received on her passive and E, so she'll likely remain as a suboptimal pick next patch. Okay, now let's run it down mid. There's only one change for the mid lane this patch, and it's going to be for Silas. Silas has also received a ton of nerfs within the past few months and is being buffed a tiny bit to help raise his stance in the meta. Firstly, his base HP regen has been increased by two, his HP regen per level has been lowered by 0.1, and his base magic resist has been increased by 2.9. Next up, his W Kingslayer will have its mana cost lowered from 50 to 70 to 40 to 60. Although these buffs will help him out a little bit, they won't be enough to bring Silas back into the meta. Due to the dozens of nerfs he received this season, it's very unlikely that Silas will be a viable blind pick, so he'll remain around the B or even C tier. Okay, now on to the 80 carries. Zaya has been one of the most heavily prioritized marksmen in competitive play due to her high amount of burst, DPS, and self-peel. For patch 9.22, it looks like the balance team are finally looking to shake up the bot lane meta and are nerfing her by a decent amount. Zaya's W Deadly Plumage will have its attack speed buff lowered from 40% to 70% to 35% to 55%. This is actually a pretty big nerf for Zaya, especially if you combine it with the previous nerfs on her ultimate. However, these might not be big enough to make Zaya completely escape the meta, so make sure to click that sub button to stay updated with her viability. Kaisa has also been one of the most heavily prioritized marksmen in competitive play and is also receiving a nerf this patch. Her Q will have its multi-hit damage lowered from 30% to 25% per missile. This means that the max damage was reduced by 10% and the evolved version lowered by 13%. This nerf is pretty small and is just a small tap on the wrist for Kaisa. She will undoubtedly be an incredible pick in patch 9.22 and all you ADCs can continue playing her for some free LP. Next up for Eddie Carries, we have Ash. Ash recently received a buff to her Q, which now allows it to become a full-on auto attack reset. However, the balance team have finally realized that this buff was a little bit too big and are nerfing her in patch 9.22. Ash's W Volley will have its mana cost increased from 50 to 70. Having that 20 extra mana cost means that her W will be a lot less spammable in lane, and it'll affect her ability to poke out her opponents. Although you'll definitely feel this nerf next patch, Ash will still remain a solid pick for solo queue, so you guys can keep playing her in your ranked games. Lastly for ADCs, we have Callista, or Callista, or, or Callista. Who knows? Who knows who this champion is? So Callista has been a completely forgotten champion in recent times. Very sad. But it looks like the balance team are finally giving her some love. Firstly, Callista's W Sentinel will have its mark damage increased from 5 to 15% max HP to 10 to 18%. Next up, Sentinel will also have its mark duration increased from 3 seconds to 4 seconds. This is a really nice buff for Callista, and it might just make her see some more play in pro matches. In fact, SKT's ADC, Teddy, already played her during MSI, which means that she's viable to some extent. But let's just hope that these buffs also help her become a lot more viable in solo queue. Also, guys, before we move on to support, let's just talk about some ADC item changes that are coming soon. Firstly, all energized effects from your attack speed items will now stack. That is right. They will stack. 
Next up, Static Shiv will have its energized damage increase from 60 to 140 to 140 flat at all ranks. And the energized attacks chain to lightning targets. Rapid Fire Cannon will have its energized damage lowered from 60 to 140 to 50 at all ranks. And the attack speed on this item has been buffed by 5%, and the bonus range has been increased by 50 as well. Lastly, Storm Razor will have its cost increased by 100, the AD lowered by 10, the crit chance increased from 0 to 25%, and the build path will now be BF Sword, Cloak of Agility, and Kerchief's Shard. These ADC item changes are some good buffs for Marksman in the bot lane, but just keep in mind that nothing is set in stone and changes can be made before any of these hit the live servers. Okay, and finally, on to supports. Blitzcrank recently received some huge buffs to his Q and ultimate, which have made him the most broken and OP support in League of Legends. In order to keep Blitz in check, he will receive a small damage nerf to his Q, Rocket Grab, during the mid to late game. Unfortunately for us Blitz haters, these nerfs are just a really, really, really small slap on the wrist and will not affect his stance in the meta. Blitzcrank will remain as an S plus tier support and you should probably pick or ban him every game. Nautilus has also been a top tier support for the entirety of this season and is finally receiving some nerfs. His ultimate depth charge will have its damage nerf from 200 to 450 to 150 to 400. This is a really, really big nerf for Nautilus support because losing 50 damage during the early game is actually pretty big. However, you do have to keep in mind that Nautilus's ult is not really used for the damage recently, so we're not actually sure if this will be enough to knock Nautilus out of the S plus tier. However, if you want to stay updated with our final consensus, then make sure to click that sub button below. Okay, that is it for our upcoming changes video for patch 9.22. Let us know which change you guys are most excited about in the comments down below. And if you guys enjoyed watching this video, then please hit that like button and sub to our channel if you want more guides like this. Also, if you guys want to increase your rank and see massive improvements to your play, go check out proguides.com using the description link below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck in your next few games, and we'll see you on the Rift.